Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Christina and I'm a homeschooling mom of five kids from 18 months all the way to 13. So I have a kid pretty much at every stage of development between 18 months and 13 years old. So today I am sharing with you my top five must have school supplies for homeschool. I'm really excited to share this with you. It was really hard to decide which things to share, but What's great about this is this is a collab with a whole bunch of other mamas that are sharing their top five. So this collab is hosted by Leilani over at Living With Eve. If you do not know Leilani, she has a wonderful YouTube channel sharing her life as a homeschool mom living in Florida. So make sure when you're done with this video, you check out her channel. I link it down below in the description box, as well as the playlist. I know I'm super excited to see what other mamas feel are must haves for homeschooling. This was a little bit tough because I feel like we're trying to avoid giving you guys the obvious answers of like, you need a laminator, right? And like all of those things and a binding machine, which I don't have and sometimes wish I did. However, there are a lot of things that I feel like I would wanna share. So I'm gonna try to keep it to five. I'm gonna try. If not, I'll be very close to five. Let's jump right in. These are in no particular order. I am just going to start sharing what I feel like I use the most that's not super obvious. So I'm not sure if you do poetry tea time, but if you do not do poetry tea time, I highly recommend at least giving it a try. I have found that poetry tea time is one of our favorite things to do in our homeschool. All of my kids, all ages, both genders. Everyone looks forward to poetry tea time. If you don't know anything about it, poetry tea time is basically setting out a pretty spread of treats and tea or even healthy snacks and tea or hot chocolate or whatever works, lemonade and poetry and or books and just making it an enchanted time of learning. Now this concept became popular through Julie Bogart, who wrote The Brave Learner and has the Brave Writer curriculum. If you do not follow her on Instagram, I highly recommend following her. And you can also follow Poetry Tea Time over on Instagram as well. So my first must have is things for Poetry Tea Time. So for us, that was a pretty tea kettle and then just pretty things for the table. I don't always bake something. To be honest, this past year, I mostly bought things, even though I'd like to tell you I baked but I would do things like cinnamon rolls or I would get banana bread like pre-made and sliced from the grocery store. Um, or I would do like chocolate covered pomegranate balls, which is something that I absolutely love. You just melt the dark chocolate, just mix in the pomegranate seeds and you place them on like parchment paper and stick them in the fridge and they absolutely love those. So we've done it with hot chocolate, we've done it with tea. We had a really wonderful time with Poetry Tea Time this past year. We did the same concept with things like writing or reading, um, sometimes with magazines. So we would do like a magazine spread instead of poetry and or books. So other things I'll just show you really quickly. I just grabbed a few for this video to kind of just like dress it up. I would have things like these fun macrame coasters and I would put like a candle and really just have like a nice vibe going on. Pretty tea towels to kind of like lay out. So I. I usually just get these from the Target dollar spot. So I have a few that I reserve just for poetry tea time. So here's my little stack that I keep actually not in the kitchen so that they don't get used for anything other than poetry tea time. And then this little table runner. Um, the table runner and these little macrame coasters I've linked in my Amazon under poetry tea time. So I have a whole section of my Amazon shop all devoted to stuff that I use for poetry tea time. So if you don't know where to get started, check out my Amazon shop in the link below and click on the poetry tea time section and you will see a ton of stuff to get started with. Number two on my list, life cycle kits. So if you do not use life cycle kits already, this is something that these could be better organized. Full disclosure, they are not. But we use multiple life cycle kits throughout the year. This year when we were studying science, I would say we use them most in the spring when we were focusing on a lot of nature study. So we do exploring nature with children and just a total sidebar, if you do not utilize the exploring nature with children curriculum, definitely check it out. I will link it down below. I absolutely love it. It is a year long 
nature curriculum that gives you a topic and a place to start. And that's, you could do just that, or you can make it as much as you want it to be. But it really drives a lot of like what we do in terms of nature study and science. So I would take a topic like butterfly week and I would have the whole life cycle kit. And again, these are linked in my Amazon below under nature study. We did worms. We did like an earthworm study. We did the ladybug. What else did we do? We did bees. Um, what else? We did ants. Where's the ants? Hopefully not lost because my kids love these. Um, I don't see the ant in here. So hopefully I can find it because my two-year-old like loves bugs and loves these little sets. We did frogs. So we have a whole bunch of these. I highly recommend these guys. I have found like free life cycle sheets that have like the blanks and you can cut them out. I'll actually just show you. Like you can, you can do these as an activity where the kids just, they're on regular paper. The kids cut them out and paste them into the right spot on the life cycle. But I like to laminate these and have them use both these and alternate with using the actual physical life cycle kits. Another way that I do this, depending on the ages of your kids, I usually do these with sensory bins. So not necessary, you could do these just with like a life cycle diagram, but I like to do like a sensory bin, have them find the different parts of the life cycle and match them up. And I would do a different one each time and then as a review, I would put them all in there and then they would have to figure out like which parts are with which life cycle because you have to remember like what the eggs look like and what the larva looks like. Is everything okay in there, Jeet? Yeah. Okay, good. She's playing in the playroom. She's doing a pretty good job. Anyway, and I have videos, I'll link them down below on my sensory bin. So when we did the frogs, I had a pond sensory bin with water beads and lily pads and all of those things, most of which I got from the dollar store. So check out that video if you want like a cheap, fun sensory bin idea. I also did a garden sensory bin also mostly things from the dollar store. So I would say my number two slash three maybe is both the life cycle kits and things for sensory bins. And you can do this super cheap with like dried beans, which are like a buck, a plastic bin from the dollar store and dollar store things to go along with your theme or things that you already have around your house. So stuff for poetry tea time life cycle sets, stuff for sensory bins. I guess that's three so far. Yikes. Okay. What else is on my list? This one I'll also sneak in because it was actually on my list, Velcro dots. This might be a super obvious one, might not be, but this is a game changer for me because I really like the idea of when I do all of these little sets, laminating them, putting Velcro on them, putting Velcro on the sheet that they attach to and being able to have them use this over and over again, like throughout the week that we're studying it, but then also be able to file them away for when we study it again next year or the following year or something like that. A lot of these I actually got on Homeschool Compass. If you're not familiar, they have tons of free printables and little unit studies that you can do. They have a lot of life cycle st type stuff on there as well. I believe these right here are from Homeschool Compass. Velcro dots are maybe number four. Okay, next up is a super practical one and maybe you know this hack, maybe you do not. I did share it as a reel a few weeks ago over on my Instagram and these metal rings are my next must have and I'm going to tell you why. Maybe you're like, duh. Maybe you're like, what are you talking about? So there are these little metal rings. Also, I've linked them on, in my Amazon under homeschool supplies, I think. So they open up like this and what they're for are flashcards. So I got these flashcards in the dollar spot at Target. They're not the thickest, but I really love their flashcards. These are just all about different countries. So they'll have like a picture and then a bunch of facts. And I feel like the problem with flashcards is that you can have like all of these different sets of flashcards and the boxes get ripped and some of them get lost or bent or they're all over the place if you have younger kids and it's just a disaster. So what I do is I hole punch the corner of all of them and then I stick one of these little metal rings on it and then 
you could either put this in some kind of pouch or filing system or whatever you'd like, but these little, little metal rings are a game changer. So I think that's technically five. I'm gonna squeeze in one more. And it goes along the lines of that same idea of poetry tea time, and that is to have things for paint and sip. Same vibe as poetry tea time. I would do like chocolate covered strawberries and some tea and a candle and a little sign that says paint and sip. And we would do like a guided painting. Sometimes we would do like a video of a guided painting. Sometimes we would figure out how to recreate a work of art. So we were studying sunflowers and we were also studying Van Gogh, who some of his most famous paintings are sunflowers. And so we recreated one of Van Gogh's sunflower paintings. I ordered off of Amazon the little paint trays. I also got a pack of six easels and paint brushes. I just got cheap acrylic paints from like the dollar store and the Target dollar spot. And then my son had some acrylic paints because one of my sons loves to paint. So I just feel like having that kind of setup really gets them excited, like, whoa, what are we doing? And really gets them to buy into recreating a masterpiece, a work of art. And then while they're painting, I'll either paint alongside them, or I've also done it where I've read a picture book to them about the artist. So they learn more about the artist while they're painting. And it's a whole sensory experience. So they're painting, they're looking at an example of the painting, they're hearing about the painter, they're sipping tea, and it's just a great experience. So I'm all about maximizing this time that we are blessed to have with our children. And don't always do the lesson to lesson. Like, listen, I know there are seasons of life where like, you just need to be able to flip the page and go to the next lesson. There are some days where I need to do that. There are some days where I grab my teacher's guide or I grab a stack of books and I'm like, meet me on the couch, I'm tired. And we do everything from the couch and we keep it super simple. But I also love having things on hand for things like poetry tea time and paint and sip so that if I have that extra energy or if I'm inspired to do something creative, I have everything I need and in 10 minutes, 15 minutes max, I can pull together a really fun and engaging learning experience, a positive experience with my kids, things that they will remember for a lifetime. So that was technically six, but I hope that you are inspired by my top six must have homeschool supplies. Let me know down below if you use any of these things and you're like, yes, I definitely would have that on my list. Or if you're like, you know what, I never thought of that, I'm definitely gonna try that out. If you are new here, if you came here from one of the other channels that are a part of this collab, please introduce yourself in the comments below. I love to get to know you guys. I would love if you'd stick around and subscribe. Click that red subscribe button, click the notifications bell. If you are not following me over on Instagram, you can follow me there at rooted underscore homeschool. I share more day-to-day -day life. You'll see kind of how I implement some of these things. You can go back and look at reels and highlights and posts and kind of see a lot of these different things in action that I've shared with you today. Make sure you check out the playlists below to the other mamas in this collab so that you can see all of the amazing things that they recommend. And definitely check out Leilani's channel, Living With Eve, who is hosting this collab. I know I'm going to check out all of those other videos to get inspired by those other moms as well. I hope to see you soon in one of my next videos and until next time, stay rooted.